Okay, Dr. Ali Mugabe welcome you to the Central Limit Theorem, a very important theorem. The Central Limit Theorem is an important theorem, a very important one. The probability distribution function of the sum of large number of independent random variables approaches Gaussian distribution. It states that the probability distribution function of the sum of large number, large number of independent, they have to be independent random variables, approaches Gaussian distribution. That's fantastic because it may be applicable to some even dependent distributions, some of them, even if they are dependent, you will still get Gaussian. And also, it works for equal or unequal distributions. If you add Poisson, exponential, if you add uniform, this theorem tells you no matter what you add, if you're looking for the sum, you are going to end up with Gaussian. Unless, of course, you tweak things and there is some strong dependence between them to make it not valid. Otherwise, whether they are dependent or independent, you're going to get Gaussian. Whether they are equal or unequal, whether they are the same or not. So it also, of course, works for continuous because if you add discrete samples, you don't expect to get a continuous curve. And Gaussian is a continuous curve. So it works for continuous distributions. Uh, the good thing, the good news is that what is large number? Uh, it works uh, practically for... Uh, finite number of n although theoretically you need a very large number like approaches infinity but the good news is that it, it's practical for many applications for finite n of course the quality and of course uh, of course the variance uh, how how it varies from the gaussian it, it depends on the number of uh, the random variables that we sum of course as in approach infinity of course, the variance of our Gaussian random variable will be infinity. So if you add more, if you add more numbers, you expect the power or the or the variance of, of the sum to be higher. Note again also that the central limit theorem does not say it's going to equal to Gaussian. It says approaches Gaussian. So the central limit theorem does not state it will be exactly Gaussian. So it's on the limit. It's approaching Gaussian. There are lots of handy applications for this, and it's going to make life things uh, simple. And this is why Gaussian is a very strong uh, distribution. I mean, by strong, I mean it's very widely used uh, distribution. Now we focus on the mean and variance of the resulting Gaussian from the central limit theorem, sum of IID. IID, it's a new abbreviation, stands for independent and identically distributed. They have the same distribution, same PDF. If you sum IID random variables, so the generated Y will be X1 plus X2 up to Xn. They all have the same mean. They're all having all the same variance. So instead of saying the mean sub I, the first mean, second mean, third mean, I just say X bar. Why? Because we're saying IID. They're identical. Instead of saying the variance X sub I, I'll just say sigma X squared. Okay, so if all, all they are identical for whatever i you have, this means for all i, then of course the expected value of y, which is the sum, it's going to be n times x. What's x? It's the mean of the individual random variable. n is the sum, as n is the number of random variables we're adding. It makes sense. So if the mean is 5, and we're adding 5 of them, we expect the mean of the sum to be 25. And the variance now okay, is defined to be the expected value of y squared minus the mean, so, which is n times x squared. Now, we can, of course, expand this uh, just by, by being a little bit careful. So, we can say that the mean or the variance of y, it's the expected value of the sum, which is here, minus x bar. All right. And, of course, this is going to be equal to the expected value of, you can call this difference as x tilde, if you like. Xn. And then we can split this summation into two summations over i and j. Okay, so we're splitting the summation. And the expected value now, if you take the expectation inside, to go from here, we're taking the expectation inside. Then we're going to find, because they are independent, okay, we can divide this into two summations. If i does not equal to j, it remains the same. For the case of i equal to j, we'll get the expected value of xi squared, because i and j now are the same. So what we did from here to here, 
we divided the we split things into two scenarios one where i equal to j which is here so we're dropping the j because i equal to j and one where i does not equal to j why are we doing this because if they are not the same and it's going to be independent so uh, we'll get if if they are going to be independent so the expected value of these two are going to be zero because x tilde is nothing but x minus its mean so this are going to give you zero and this is going to be the variance of xi the definition of the variance of xi and if you sum from one to n it's going to be n times sigma x squared so the conclusion is the resultant variance will be n times the individual variances and the resultant expectation or mean will be n times the original expectation this would be n so remember that x tilde has a zero mean because x uh, tilde is defined to be this term here so here's the conclusion here very important conclusion mean and variance of, of the resulting sum is going to have scaled version of the sum and scaled version of the of the variance now we can consider the special case of having normalized gaussian if you want the sum to be normalized then you have to subtract the mean and divide by the standard deviation this is something we have done before with gaussian so what's y y is the sum of the original iid variables what's w it's the normalized version of y so again if you want to normalize the title say normalized gaussian sum you need to subtract the mean and then divide by the standard deviation so in general the mean is the expected value of x i of course we are, we are looking at the sum because y is the sum and this is the general standard deviation for the case of having iid we just mentioned that this is going to be n sigma x squared this is the variance and we can take the root so we get this expression so if you sum the variables and remove their mean and divide by this quantity the sum will be normalized which means it's going to have uh, an expectation equal to zero and it's going to have a variance equal to one so the, the central limit theorem as you take n large if you have if you want to have gauss normalized gaussian then you get uh, gaussian with zero mean and unit variance of course this has a characteristic function given by the following expression that's the characteristic function of the normalized Gaussian so in this, this slide it's just to show you just in case you are interested in the normalized version otherwise there is no new theory here okay so the central limit theorem will uh, just try to de to demonstrate this with examples to, to to believe in this let's say that we have a random variable divide defined just as a sum of two random variables x1 and x2 and x1 and x2 are just iid uniformly distributed if you sum them up you get the convolution of the two which is shown here as a triangle this is the pdf of sum of two random variables with just sum of two we are getting close to the gaussian distribution so this one is the gaussian and this is the convolution between two random variables of course if you start that's the triangular function if you do again if you add one more random variable of course this is just the parameter the variance and uh, the variance of uh, the Gaussian and it's, you scale by two the mean used to be half a over two now we have the mean equal to a and the variance is going to be the original variance uh, scaled by two so it was a squared over three for the uniform distribution now it's a squared over six what I want to see is that if if you just consider two Gaussian approximation will be very valid just take the right Gaussian with the right uh, mean and variance I'm just substituting the mean and the variance to get the expression for the Gaussian it turns out to be very good approximation with just two now try three try to try to sum three random variables which are uniform and of course if we add here another one x3 uh, things would improve and we can check the mean and variance and uh, we can also try non id we started with the simplest example of uniform but it applies for anything we can try this with MATLAB so uh, I have the MATLAB code here I can share with you and uh, I'm sharing all my slides so you can cut and paste this expression okay so starting from the left hand side here where we have just two random variables and then of course we are adding more three four just with four or very few number you can get uh, the sum to be very Gaussian 
that's kind of proving the central limit theorem. You can try changing the distribution to any other distribution, which is, which is, for example, uh, IID or different. Uh, if you want to check the mean and variance, you can you can use these co two commands, mean and variance, and you can see that the more you add to the values, so the mean here was 100, then it it becomes uh, so the mean is started to change as we go on uh, moving to the left. Every time we're adding two. You get 100, we're getting 3, it becomes 150. We're adding 4, it becomes 200. Also, the variance changes, but because these are rescaled, you don't see the, you don't see the variation in the variance because this is not the same dimension. But I advise you to uh, strongly to, to try this yourself. You have the code, you just cut and paste and enjoy uh, playing with the numbers of MATLAB. Change the, the number of sums that you add and you, you will prove the central limit theorem. All right, so I'll leave this as a self-study for you. Uh, the last section says central limit theorem for non-IID. For non-IID, central limit theorem still holds under some conditions. Okay, so he, uh, our reference is uh, just putting the conditions in 4.7.1. For example, it studies the independence and not identical distributed. The case of independent but not identical. And also the case of not independent, which is dependent, uh, it's also shown, it was studied by Kramer in 1946. But these are beyond the scope here. I just want you to believe that the central limit theorem is a very strong theorem. It applies for the case of independent and identity distributed. And there are lots of cases where even with dependence, it still holds true. That's the end of our section. If you have any question, please write in the comment section. If you have any comments, please also write them and share with us. Thank you for being good listeners and see you in coming videos. Thank you very much.